Well, it's finally time. It's only taken me a year to get around to it, but I am, in theory, building out my R730XD. Ironically, I have a Dell PowerEdge T640 that I'm probably never going to sell. That I'm kind of kicking around making my new server, but I don't want to spend another $2,000 on parts to make it the way I want it. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to try to be happy with uh, this R730. And I'm not quite ready to put drives in it yet, which kind of sucks. But I need to uh, kind of finish building and testing this before I start throwing drives in. Um, I am kind of scavenging parts from... I think it's that one over there. Uh, on the bottom of the stack. Uh, it's the Rack 7910. I stole the uh, power supplies for it because they're 1100 watt. And I swapped out the uh, perk RAID controllers already. And, um, yeah, so what I need to do now, even though I haven't fully committed, <laughs> um, I'm going to switch out the networking card. I think it has an X520 10 gig in it right now, but this is an Intel X540. I want this for the networking because I'm going to do RJ45. I use one of my own custom Tesla power cables, one of my nice ones, not one of my crappy ones that I made myself. <laughs> So I can uh, install my Tesla M40 in there. Got 120 gigs of RAM, and then um, this uh, IO Crest uh, NVMe card. It still has the uh, one terabyte drives I put in it, um, but I don't know if I'm gonna what I'm gonna do about my four terabyte drives yet. I want to put them in there, but as you can see. It's putting a bend in the drives, and I'm hoping I haven't killed my drives, but I think they can handle that slight bend. Um, I don't know if I just need to go thinner thermal pads or no thermal pads, so we'll see. But yeah, I was just doing some firmware updates. I'm probably going to have to uh, do firmware updates on the network card. I don't know if they're up to date or not. It shouldn't really matter, but... It's a lot easier to do it when you can just boot into Windows than trying to do it over iDRAC because I haven't taken the time to learn how to do that. <laughs> and I already know how to do firmware updates in Windows. One bummer about this uh, upgrade is um, I'm using what has basically become my test Tesla M40. This one I bought, it uh, ran with damage. I don't really like this one <laughs> for no reason other than it's damaged. But, um, yeah, I'm using that one because uh, I don't want to have to take down my R720 that's currently running. If I had the time, I would have committed to Proxmox by now. And... Putting the uh, H730P in here would have been pointless. I think the Proxmox uses its own goofy little RAID system, but I just uh, am not willing to commit the time to learn how to use Proxmox right now. I'm guessing to do it right, I'd probably need to spend like a month of, you know, a couple hours a day figuring things out, reading documents, and just not interested in that right now. Not when there's work to be done, and, and I really need to get these servers dealt with. The biggest problem I'm having right now is I'm running out of space on my primary NAS, and I really want to get switched over. don't remember if I'm going to have to remove the... Uh, Airflow shroud. I might have to. Let's see here. Oops. I should probably remove this riser. Hope I didn't break it. <laughs> Cause I'd have to buy another one. I don't have uh, any X16 risers. But yeah, that's weird. It's all bent up. I don't know why that is. Someone must have. Uh, and careless when they're removing it. 
Meaning me, Smith. Alrighty. It'd be funny if I put this in and I commit to it and then I change my mind again, but I don't think I'm going to. I don't think there's really any um, 10 gig switches available that aren't somewhat noisy. If I don't want to spend a lot of money. Yeah, I don't like these. Is it seated? It doesn't feel like it. No, I think it was seated. Most of these are bendy. <laughs> I think that's in. I guess we'll find out if anything goes snap or crunch. Alrighty, well, that's already out, so might as well put the test the card in, make it easy. Not that much harder, but might as well make it easy if I can. All right. I have some low profile NVMe drives that are um, PCI Express cards, and they're two terabyte each. I don't know what I'm gonna do with those quite yet. I have three open slots over here. I have also considered the possibility of like a video card or two. Um, I've been slacking. I need to rebuild the uh, cat TV because the one I made broke. And I'm uh, really bad about stuff sometimes. <laughs> Especially when it comes to doing things that don't pay the bills. It's hard to get motivated to do something if it doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> mm, I don't even know. Yeah, it might be worth having out. And this will go up here. I do have a pair of Intel uh, 1500 Pro Series 180 gig solid state drives in the back uh, flex base. Those are going to be my overkill boot drive for ESXi. Thought about doing an SD card module. Oh, that's right, that's solid, so I'll worry about that. But, um, boy, that's sharp. I wonder if I should deburr the edges of that. My goodness. Um, I think ESXi was complaining with the newer version and saying basically that you should install these on SSDs, and it's like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I have them, and the SSD market's kind of all over the place, so it is what it is. I don't know what to do. That is super sharp, though. I mean, I probably could shave some hairs with that. No. <laughs> I think I'm going to hit that with some sandpaper real quick. All right, gave it just a light touch. It still feels sharp, but it's not. It definitely doesn't feel as sharp as it did. I'm pushing a lot harder now and it just feels annoying. It doesn't feel like it's going to peel my skin off. All right. Oh, <laughs> I forgot I had to put memory in. I'm just so excited about uh, getting the cards in. Oh well, it's not that big of a deal. I kind of want to go 256 gigabyte. I have the memory on hand. I just have to find a machine to dig it out of. So I'm just going to be lazy. Also, I may end up eventually upgrading the CPUs in this. 
I thought about putting faster, more powerful CPUs in it than what has. I think it's like dual 3.6 gigahertz, six core Xeons. Um, but I'm hardly using my current server as it is for anything beyond a NAS. So uh, and then one of my VMs, I'm not even going to need anymore because, oops, wrong way. Um, let's put you over here. It's not going to have a video card attached to it anymore. Not that the video card attached to it was any good. It was, uh, I think, a GTX 745 1 gig. Previously had the this <laughs> Tesla M40, but I uh, changed plans. And honestly, I kind of want the XT server chassis no matter what because. Um, I want the drive bays. And I forget where I saw it, but I saw a little hack somebody did. Whoops, I put it the wrong way again. Um, where they had a uh, three and a half inch mid plane for extra storage in, in this particular R730 chassis with the uh, two and a half inch front bays, which was kind of intriguing. But I like having a two drive redundancy when I can, so it's probably not something I'll end up doing. I'll be really happy when uh, two terabyte solid state drives are down to $55 each again, and then I'll fill this with the rest of the way with uh, two terabyte drives. I'm kind of mad at myself for not buying more of those. There we go. And I gotta find the cover now. Oh, don't want to forget. I'm gonna put this back in here. This is my boot drive for testing purposes. Totally not a uh, legit way to do this, but yeah. Also, I don't have as much space now. <laughs> Let's see if there's a convenient way to route this. I think this is a solid plastic case, so there we go. I know the power supplies are good because I've been using them and I believe the network card I had in my R720s previously but then I pulled it out because I wanted the X520s so I could use the copper DAX that I paid a lot of money for and don't need anymore <laughs> and uh, yeah this is going to have to do some power characterization stuff do some cycling I think I'm going to uh, just pause and then come back once it's booted into Windows. I'm back into Windows and um, server's running. It actually doesn't seem too loud, which surprises me. I thought it was louder than this when I put the uh, Tesla card in it previously. Although I guess that wasn't an R730 XD. Just looking at that. It almost seems like it's bent, but I don't know what's going on there. Weird optical illusion, I guess. And I don't have a front display of this goofy iDRAC quick sync thing. Which I think requires an app for my phone, and then I can NFC something to it and whatever, but... Um... Yeah. It'll be a little bit of a bummer that I won't be able to, uh... Just look through the rack and be like, Oh, well the server's pulling this many watts. So... But that's kind of just the general downside of having a um, at least 12th or 13th gen XD series server. I don't know if they've changed that with the newer ones. There's really not anywhere for them to put the display, so maybe if they had some weird pullout one, I guess. But yeah, I guess they could do electronics like this, but put a display there. But I think most of the time people aren't going to be looking at the uh, display anyways. So, did boot. That's weird. Normally this list has a lot more stuff. I see BIOS and iDRAC, but I'm missing um, diagnostics and a few other things on the list. Um, let's see, network firmware. Yeah, it's slightly out of date. So, I'm going to update that next and go from there. Well, I had to tweak some settings and uh, flip some switches, turn some knobs, whatnot. <laughs> 
and uh, yeah, we're uh, cooking with gas. Um, so right now it's sitting idle at 140 watts, which is fine. That's pretty standard and expected. And the fans are surprisingly low at 32%. I thought they were going to be a little higher than that, but um, yeah, pretty stoked about that. Now that bifurcation is on, it does see all four of my uh, one terabyte crucial P3 drives. Um, and this is, uh, it has dual E5 2643 V3 CPUs. Um, they're six core processors at 3.4 gigahertz each. So I don't know how much um, processing power that ends up being. So ESXi will report that as 40.8 gigahertz of processing power. Whether that's a valid way to look at it or not, eh, I don't know. I mean, if I had uh, 22.5, I can do the math, I guess. If I had 22.5 gigahertz cores in this, like my R720, then that'd be 50 gigahertz worth of processing power. But, uh, yeah, progress. So, really the next step here is I need to run the onboard diagnostics on this make sure it's happy with that memory because I haven't tested the memory in this machine. And then I'm going to double check all my backups on my R720. And then uh, I'll be moving those uh, drives into this, which will be eight 480 gigabyte Intel SSDs and another eight 1.92 terabyte Intel SSDs. And I need to grab four more blanks. So I'll, uh, come up with four more blanks to fill this in but uh yeah progress hopefully this means i'll have uh upgraded working server here soon minus those four terabyte drives i don't know what's happening with that yet but uh yeah hopefully that's interesting and thanks for watching